In this video, we're gonna give you some of the secrets, the ninja super structural engineering secrets of designing reinforced concrete members. Hiya! This video, if you hadn't figured out, is about useful tricks to help you design beams quickly. And you say, why would you need useful tricks? What are they all about? Well, if you can do things quickly, you can make more money, money. But life's not about money. Life's sometimes about doing things faster, getting things done quicker, having more time for your family or doing for the things or like watching YouTube videos. So these are some tricks. They're gonna help you get through the design maze quickly. And then pretty soon, we're gonna work some example problems where you see these tricks in action. The first trick, you have this fee factor. We've talked about it before and it goes on your capacity. That's why the value is less than one, okay? And, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna assume the fee factor is 0.9 because that's what we want, right? So we're actually gonna use some other tricks to help us get to about 0.9, okay? And so we're gonna just assume we're there and go ahead, just move ahead. So if we assume we're 0.9, we'll check it at the end, don't worry. We're gonna divide this factored moment Right, whatever our, our load is, whatever our moment is, all by the fee factor, okay? Divide by that. Now, if we have dimensions of a beam already given for us, that's awesome, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we gotta pick them out for ourselves. If you have no choice, if you get to pick your own, then you should make your D over B ratio. What's the D? That is from the, um, the fiber in compression to the centroid of the steel, that's your D, and your B is your width of the beam, you should try to make your D over B ratio about 1.5, or your depth about 50% larger than the width of your beam. Also, try to use number eights to number 11 bars for your longitudinal steel. If you get too much bigger than um, um, a number 11, it's kind of hard to handle. It's hard to get the development length, which we'll talk about coming up. And if you get too much smaller than a number eight, it's not very economical. A lot of times in a reinforced concrete structure, you'll pick like one size bar, or almost always one size bar for the longitudinal steel, and you'll use it throughout. Ha, there's a big tip for you. Always, always, always show your cross sections. Always draw your cross sections, okay? with whatever dimensions you come up with, right? Draw them, draw them, draw them, draw your steel in, draw your stirrups in, okay? Draw your bars at the top. Always, always, always you wanna draw them and make sure that they're gonna fit and they're gonna work. We'll talk more about that in another video as well. But here's the biggest one. This is the most important trick I'm about to show you. If we look at our awesome, most important critical equation to find the, the nominal maximum moment capacity of a um, reinforced concrete beam, well, we know it's this, okay? ASFY times D minus A over two, and this phi we already talked about earlier, we can get rid of that if we want. And this A, right, we know this is equal to ASFY divided by 0.85 F prime C B. Now, I'm gonna show you some algebra here. We're gonna plug this equation in for A, and it gets this, and we're gonna divide this by phi and move it over here, and then we're gonna do some more algebra, okay? More algebra, okay? More algebra down here at the bottom. And why we would do all this is this is kind of the big nasty equation we would need to solve to figure out how much steel we needed if we knew all these other parameters, if we knew Fy, if we knew F prime C and beta, if we know Fy and D, if we know is F prime C beta phi M N over phi, if we know this and set it equal to zero and we solved it, we could solve for our area of steel. This is kind of like solving a quadratic equation. If we want to solve for X, this would be like X squared and this would be like A, a constant. And then here's our X here and then all this other stuff, all of this stuff together would be kind of like our B, right? 
AX squared plus BX. And then all this stuff at the back is our C. If you can solve quadratic equations quickly and you love that, that's great, but I don't love it. Okay, I, it's not something I get excited about. I love concrete. Who doesn't, right? Right? But I don't love solving quadratic equations. So instead, we can make a simplifying assumption. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the ninja move. It's awesome. It's awesome. Here we go. We take our equation. This is the same equation we started with up here. This one, this one, this exact same equation. And we're going to assume that this part is equal to just 0.9D. You're like, whoa, whoa, how'd you know? Well, if you do these problems a lot, if you do them a whole lot, people started to realize that this term was pretty close to 0.9D. Not always, but it's the majority of the time, it's pretty close to 0.9D. So why not go ahead and assume that? Because if we did, this equation now becomes super easy. Now let's, let's hear me out. I want to be crystal clear here. I am not saying that this is good enough for, for finding the capacity of a beam. I'm saying this is a good first estimate to get a design started. And then what we're going to do at the end is we're going to come back after we get the very end. We're going to check and make sure this is right. And we also are going to check the strain in our steel to make sure that our fee is correct. And I'll tell you a secret. This is how you make design easy. This is how you become an awesome designer by seeing these simplifications in very complicated problems. And I'm going to show you some more ninja moves coming up. They are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to say thanks to Kla2 and also to Arvind K. Man, thank you so much for your nice compliments. I really appreciate it. I love them. I love them. I love them. Keep them coming. Go concrete.